DP, let's go ahead and talk about football, whatever else we got to talk about right now. Real easy question. I thought I'd open it up with one that, you know, may not be a softball. It may be a little bit like a hanging slider, depending on, you know, what your favorite flavor is at the plate. You taking Georgia or the field right now in the college football playoff? I'll, I'll take Georgia. Um, I think uh, I think they're the best team. I, I don't think anybody's going to debate that. But I will say this. I think when you've watched them this year, I do think their offense has a tendency to get streaky. And, and you'll see them go through some spurts where they're not, um, not as dialed in. Um, but one thing I, uh, one thing I've seen from Stetson over and over and over again is big moments, big games. The dude comes up big and he's got a, he's got a swagger about him and he makes plays when, when you really, really need it. So I'll take Georgia, but I, I do think they got the worst draw. I think they got the most talented team. Um, you know, Ohio state's got so many dudes. I mean, they've got a lot of, you know, especially offensive firepower, both tackles are going to be, you know, first and second round picks at the most, at the worst, you know, your quarterback's going to be a, a high first round pick. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a high first round pick. Like there's a lot of talent on that Ohio State roster. They haven't gotten it together and fully clicked in a while. And I watch them and there's, I, I wonder schematically what they're trying to accomplish and who they are and what they're doing. And, um, but, but I think they're a talented team. So I don't think the draw is going to do them any favors. Yeah. Arrested Ohio State team, after a week, you know, a week, uh, an extra week off after you had an, another physical game. So I think I don't think it'll be easy, though. Yeah, and, and you never want to play a team coming off an embarrassing loss like the way Ohio State was embarrassed at home. But schematically, you, you know, when I, this game's fascinating to me because when I watch Georgia play LSU and I get it, even when Georgia was in man, it seemed like they, they were going to keep everything in front of them, kind of go the opposite way of what Ohio State did with Michigan, the way they attacked LSU. Uh, they were going to give up stuff underneath and make LSU go 9, 10, 11, 12 plays because they didn't think Jaden Daniels could throw them, in my opinion, down the field consistently enough throughout the game. And when you rotate five men on the defensive line like LSU does with what Georgia has up front, it's a matter of time before that dam breaks. If you're if you're Georgia's defense and you see Marvin Harrison Jr., I know Jackson Smith and Jig went and playing, but Marvin Harrison Jr., Jr. You see Egbuka, you see Stover at kind of that Y flex, tight end H, whatever you want to tag it, position. And then the two healthy backs now, as healthy as they've been in a while with Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams. I mean, you got to mix it up with these guys. I don't think you can go and say, all right, CJ Stroud, take him 9, 10, 11, 12 plays down the field because he'll sit in the pocket and do it. Yeah, and CJ Stroud, when, when it's right and when it's in rhythm and when it's good timing, CJ Stroud's the best quarterback in college football. Like he can absolutely spin it. He's got uh, when, and when he knows the answers to the test, man, he is really, really good. He'll anticipate as well as anybody and make some great throws. You just got to make him feel a little bit uncomfortable. And, and when you watch Ohio State, you know the the weakness of their line is is the interior. Um, there's a guy named Jalen Carter for Georgia that yeah. will be the biggest difference maker in this game. Like '88 is an animal. Um, Honest to God, when he's played this year and specifically over the last four or five games, I think he's the best player in college football, the most dominant force in college football the way he's been playing. It's it's just stupid. I got clip after clip. I have to to make a tape for him for the postseason. And I can go in every single game and watch him absolutely annihilate 300-pound human beings. Like throw them around like – they're my they're my little six year old son. I mean, it's 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 incredible. He's got so much power with his quickness. Um, he's he's just unreal. So, you know, he'll be the he'll be the disruptor. He's the guy that's got to get in the lap. It's pressure because I I said that about C J Stroud. But the thing the thing in turn about C J Stroud, if you make him a little bit uncomfortable, yep. you make him a little bit indecisive or you know indecisive. You move him off the spot a little bit. He's not an elite creator. That's not what he does. That's not who he is. He'll roll and make a good throw across his body, but he's not that guy that's going to like immediately get pressured, know his answer, and, and flick it sidearm and, and make this play. So I think the big thing is how do you make him feel uncomfortable? Ohio State run game hasn't been you know elite by any stretch, but they haven't had both backs healthy. You know, Mayan Williams, Travion Henderson, both those guys, you know, highly recruited dudes, especially Henderson, one of the highest recruits in the country. You can see the juice. Um, so the Ohio State, you know what they're going to have to be? They're going to have to be physical. Like yeah. they're going to the one thing. The one thing LSU did that translates to Ohio State is LSU was one of the best in the country. They might be the best in the country at contested catches. And when you watch Ohio State, I think Ohio State's number two in the country, one or two in the country 
at contested catches. So, you know, Georgia's going to have tight coverage. They're going to have good coverage. Can you make those big plays that you've seen Marvin Harrison Jr. make all year long? Yeah, you know, t- talking about Jalen Carter, I mean, I watched him pick up Jaden Daniels in one hand and hold up the number one in the other. He some people, that, you know, I had, I had a coach tell me one time, some people are born to, to build spaceships. Some people are born to run for the U.S. Olympic track team. Some people are born to play defensive line. And when you mix that type of power <laughs> with your hands, with that type of, of quick twitch in your hips and in your ankles and in your shoulders, that, that man was born to rush the passer and that man was born to stop the run. Jalen Carter, I, I, I love Walker last year. I like what he's done with the Jags. I think Jalen Carter, when it's all said and done, we look at this two-year span from Georgia, he'll be better than Jordan Davis. He'll be better than Nicobe Dean. He'll, Malachi Starks may end up being better than all of them when it comes mm. down to it. But from a defensive line perspective, give me Jalen Carter all day. Mm. Uh, yeah. David, Stetson Bennett, national champion, has Georgia undefeated again with the possibility of going back-to-back. 24 hours from now, he will sit front and center at the Heisman Trophy uh, presentation. What are your thoughts on him being a Heisman Trophy finalist, and what will his legacy be at Georgia? Well, I just remember being with you guys at SEC Media Day type stuff, and y'all couldn't even put him in your top five at quarterback. I did. God's sake. Look I mean, at that. I, I yeah, put him hey, in my I'll top five. Credit. See, hey, look at I this, Blaine, man. Blaine hates him, though. Uh, first of all, I Blaine don't hate him. anybody. He, I don't know. Well, he's... He's a Will Levis fan. You know, can, I some yeah, right. fan. Yeah. can I get yeah, some right. Can I get some having Dave. Stetson in my top five? Yeah, right. Yes. I, Thank I, you. And, and here's the thing. I, I had Stetson, obviously, in my top five, but and it's because, listen, everybody told Stetson he wasn't any good, but Stetson's not he's not smart enough or whatever <laughs> enough to believe it. Like he doesn't, he doesn't care. And he's got um, you know, he's he's one of the best in the country. At tight window throws. He mm-hmm. makes some some really tight throws. Listen, he's a little bit of a gunslinger. Um, mm-hmm. But but the thing you like about Stetson is he's always bet on himself. He's always believed in himself, even when coaches. And I think I've told you all this before, but last year, guys, in fall camp, he got zero reps. It's wild. Yep. Stetson Bennett didn't throw one ball with t- in team. Like it was J T. Daniel. It was Brock Vandergriff. It was all these highly rec- Carson Beck, who's the backup now. Like. All these highly recruited guys, and they told him, "If you want to play some, if you want to play, go somewhere else." And now he's looking on the precipice of being the greatest Georgia quarterback in the history of the game. Like mm. it's been amazing, an amazing ride. Um, listen, him and Hooker getting hurt, Blake Corum getting hurt uh, plays a part in who goes to the postseason awards. One thing too, I, I get I get so annoyed with people because they get so they be, they're so disrespectful to people that you know, that earn their way to do something. And Mm. Heisman voting is regional. Like, you're going to get a person from the Midwest. You're going to get a person from the West Coast. You're going to get a person like that East Coast. That's the way it works. It it, it always is because the the splitting of votes across Mm. the country. So um, it was a pretty cool thing to see a guy and and his story. You know, when they make his movie, uh, this is another (laughs) piece and another layer to it that will be pretty crazy. It'd be quite fitting to have Blaine play him. And I think it would. So. I, I think that would be very that, fitting. Right? Um, Shia LaBeouf would be perfect, though. <laughs> David, uh, your Bulldogs really did Blaine, a number. you're such a hater. <laughs> oh, David, what is he? Look, is. I thought we were a trust tree. Let's fight, all pile right? on Blaine. I've never, look, oh, look, look, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm not a Stetson fan, but I give it respect. Whereas, Steve, Stetson's absolutely <laughs> balling this year, and he deserves to beat the Heisman final. I, I love it. David, your Bulldogs really did a number on my Wolverines and the college football playoff, which I, look, I'm still going to make good on my bet to sing the Georgia fight song. I learned it and everything. You know, I was there ready to make good on my bet, just as I'm ready to make good on my paintball bet. You know, oh, you're Blaine getting, has to you're set that up. Saturday, but Lord. since then, Michigan, 13-0, and for the first time in program history, going to the college football playoff here. Go. What do you expect from Michigan in the playoff? And if we see a Michigan-Georgia rematch, is there a double or nothing situation here, David? First of all, yes. In, in <laughs> the double or nothing. Um, that, that, that's very simple. But the pay, I don't know what the paintball bet is, but I used to freeze the paintballs overnight and then go no, play paintball. So I'd love to see y'all freeze that and then shoot him. But no. anyways. Um, I lost fantasy football, I, I think, long story short. Well, I think, I think Michigan um, – I think the difference between Michigan this year and last year, I think Michigan was happy to beat Ohio State, happy to be in the playoff. I think, you know, this year they're probably going for a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, I, I think I think their run game is stupid. How about Edwards, by the way? Good Lord. Quorum, <laughs> yep. you know, steps out of the way. Edwards has been banged up himself, and he comes in and has just been elite of elite. 
Uh, how about the decision by JJ McCarthy with for Coach, you know, Coach Harbaugh? Like McCarthy was was fighting with McNamara in the beginning of the season, starting them both because I think he wanted to get to the point where he could get JJ in the game because he's a he's a better athlete with with more upside, obviously, and mm. it's paid off. I, I think Michigan's gonna. I think they're gonna take care of TCU. I think it's a bad matchup for TCU. I think Michigan's. I think Michigan's too physical for TCU on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Um, if they can handle their skill on the perimeter, it'll be good. But I, I think that, you know, I think just like probably everybody else, if it gets down to Michigan and Georgia, I don't think it would necessarily be as bad as it was a year ago. But styles make fights, and you're not going to punk Georgia. You're not going to line up and pound Georgia. And I, I just I think that's what they do. That's who they are. That's how they live. And I think they do it at a little bit higher level with a little bit higher player than – than Michigan does, but I, I would not expect the same result as last year. Yeah, well, I, I think that's one of the reasons he went to J.J. McCarthy, too, because he realizes I'm not going to be able to line up with, with you know, vanilla ice cream at quarterback and beat Georgia in 12 personnel. I've got to have somebody that can extend the play inside the pocket and outside the pocket. Who was the guy who scored a touchdown against Georgia last year from Michigan? Remember that guy was? It was J.J. McCarthy. Mm -hmm. What do you got, Mike? Well, David, I was expecting a lot of things today, and um, for you not to come on here and call me a hater kind of hurts. I'm going to be honest. After <laughs> this, I'm going to go home. I'm going to look in the mirror, and I'm going to say, it's not, your, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault. So I'm blaming yeah, Stetson yes. Bennett. Yes, totally. <laughs> I'm going to go straight to the Booster Club here, DP. Um, and Travis Elrod wants to know, hashtag ask David, what's the most challenging part on working on game day? Hmm. Um... It's probably just like anything else. It's probably, you, you know, you travel a good bit and you're away from your family. That That's something that is always hard. Um, but I think, you know, it's it's finding your your place, finding out, finding where you like. It's a team. Right. So we're yeah. all we're all teammates and you're trying to figure out, you know, where's your spot? You know, how do you do it? How do you become the best teammate? Um, you know, that that's all the stuff that I think that goes into it. We have uh, characters that change and and morph and you have to mm -hmm. change and morph and you know, like coach this year wasn't there a ton and it it changes so i think when you have the element of live tv and a lot of things that you don't know what's going to happen is probably the most challenging but i'll be honest it's a it, it's a pretty good gig i ain't complaining <laughs> um and, and i think there's a lot more a, a heck of a lot of good and there's not a lot that's challenging yeah all right david heather mama wants to know are we seeing a new era of college football where georgia takes the mantle from alabama yeah, I think we've all been been stipulating that for a while now, right? Like, I think, I think when you look at Bama this year, they were they were very underwhelming. They didn't have a case really to even to be in the college football playoff. I, I don't think, um, I don't think they were really considered that heavily, which is kind of crazy because it's the first yeah. time in a long time that Alabama didn't they didn't have a good win. I mean, they played this whole year and didn't really they didn't play what we were accustomed to them seeing. Um, but you know what? Like, listen, the way they've recruited at the elite level, they've recruited, they're still very much going to be in the mix. But I think Kirby, his identity, who he is, how he recruits, how he lives, I think he's I think he's building something special that definitely could, could be the new the new standard. But again, we're changing too with college football because after yeah. next year, you know, 12 team playoff, that's a new era. Who handles that well? I think Kirby and company have handled the NIL exceptionally well but then now you're adding new wrinkles to the equation that that could change things too yeah and when i put it on social media i think george is the new bama i didn't mean that they're going to have the exact same run of success i don't think anybody for a while is going to be able to recreate what nick saban did six out of the last 12 but as far as being the new alpha the new bully on the block georgia i think is taking that mantle away from alabama because when they get off the bus it looks like what alabama used to look like and still really looks like getting off the bus in 2009 and 2010 when we weren't used to seeing you know the globanauts or xerxes <laughs> immortals getting off the bus but uh dp we really appreciate you coming on my friend uh you know it's all love uh hell of a job this year on game day you know i know obviously with the season winding down you're gonna maybe maybe get a little downtime but who knows you're always working uh we always appreciate you taking time to come chill with us I right, love you, Blaine. Just kidding, bro. Love you, David. See you soon. It's all love. <laughs> everybody love everybody. See you, all right, DP. See, see you, buddy. Up. Hello, YouTube. It's me, Jake, and David sitting to my left. This Christmas, we just ask one thing and one thing only. You hit that subscribe button because without that, you're basically giving us coal. And we don't think you're that type of people. And we've been good all, uh, been good all year. At least I have, David.